method. This is a really simple method to making PC boards. I'm going to go through this, this a set of slides. We're going to provide you some information on uh, about PC boards, why you would want it, some options you can have, and uh, uh, give you a little knowledge about PC board material, which will help you out in the long run. Okay, so um, go ahead, flip to the next one. All right, so why make a PC board? Well, you know, I'm going to let you guys read that, and I'm going to kind of talk to you about why I think I, I want a PC board. I like a PC board because when I'm working on a project, I like to have, uh, I like to keep going. I don't like to stop. I don't want to go, uh, you know, do half an hour today and a half an hour or two days from now and a half an hour later on. I like to keep going. And your options besides a PC board is to do wire to wire, point to point uh, wiring. And if you do that, you end up having to make a tremendous amount of decisions that are going to probably get you in trouble by, you're going to make a mistake. And you know, I mean, first things like, how are you going to lay out, how are you going to lay out the parts on, on your perf board? And uh, by perf board, I mean something that looks like this. You know, this is actually a pretty good one because if you work with one of these, you can pretty much do a one-to-one, -one. but then again, the form factor of this is pretty nasty. It's you know long and skinny, and you usually want something that's rectangular and small. So, but even doing this, it's real easy to count wrong and make a mistake. Uh, it's a real problem. So, when you when you make a PC board, you're going to have to lay it out. So when you lay it out, you have to build this. A schematic. So when I build a schematic on a wire to wire, what do I do? I tend to write it down on a piece of paper. Okay? Well, that's cool for that piece of paper, but it doesn't capture it. Now, by using software pro uh, programs, I can capture that uh, same schematic very easily. Not a very hard thing to do. And uh, it's now easy to modify and even more is that now I can make a PC board that captures that schematic and I know the wires are going to be right. If my schematic is right, the wires are going to be right. Okay? And so the layout software ensures that your PC board will match your schematic. You have rule checkers, so like, oh man, I forgot to hook up VCC. Your, your schematic software is going to tell you, eh, 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 you're doing something wrong here. Uh, okay. And when you get to the end and you got to figure out, well, okay, I got three chips here and I got to do all the wiring, how am I going to do it? You can use an auto router software, which will do 95% of that for you. And then you just have to do a little tuning, and that's really nice. Okay, now, the other thing about a PC board is it allows you to use this, some of the newer devices. Now, I'm going to pass this one around. This is actually three little breakout boards that I've made, but I want you to look at this one. You know, if I were doing wire to wire, this would be impossible. I, or at least for me, it would be impossible. I couldn't do it. Now, uh, in a breakout board, this obviously I can now handle it. Uh, this represents a. If you've got one of these programmers that has ten, and you need six pins instead of a ten face interface, that's what this guy is. This is a little tiny uh, programming board, breakout board, and then this one is. Uh, this is actually an MSP 430 28 pin. It's not SOIC, it's SSOIC. Next one down. But anyway, and it's all made with the, te the technique that I'm going to show you. Okay, uh, I would argue that a PC board is easier to trouble troubleshoot. It's more reliable, it has less noise, it's uh, more robust. Uh, it's more professional looking, and it's actually easier to assemble, uh, and they're not too badly priced. Next. Okay. Now, so once you decide I want a PC board, you have to look at, well, so I want to go through the trouble of making it myself, we're going to want to go to a board house and have it made. Alright, well, here's some of the pros and cons. Now. Again, the thing that I like about doing it myself is the control that I have. Okay, it will not look as good as a professionally made printed circuit board. 
just won't do it. But it will be so much better than point to point or a prototype board uh, that it's going to, it'll knock your socks off. And once you do one and you see how easy it is, uh, it opens up a lot of doors. All right. Um, Here's some of the pros of the shop, and you know they're they're pretty good. Uh, probably the biggest thing for me, since I'm one M chief, and two is I don't like to weigh, is the weighting in the chief. Okay. Now, flip. There is one option that I'd like to make you aware of as as part of a, a robot club slash builders. Next slide, please. Is um, is there is a group out in uh, Portland, Oregon that's uh, actually a robot club, though they have become more of a maker space, that will actually, and this link is the, how you get to them, they will actually, uh, you send them your design, and they take your small design and build up a big panel, and then they send that panel to a PCB maker, and uh, they do, and it's really, really nice. Uh, it's five dollars per square inch. So now this board that we're going to build today is one and a half by two. So I think that's three, three square inches. So it'd be fifteen dollars for that board. But you would end up getting three copies of it. Okay. So if you had three of them, what's the downside of it? Well, the downside is that you usually they what they do is they have a panel that they design and they set it up and people start sending them orders and they fill up the panel. When the panel fills up, then you gotta wait till the next panel. And the panels are scheduled about every two weeks. So it's very possible in a busy part of the year that you might take three weeks to get your on the panel and then then after that they have a nine day time. So for me, the way I, I work, that would be for I, that would be like watching you know dust. I, I just couldn't handle that. Okay, now there are things. Uh, there's one big thing that a, a house can do that that if you're doing these by hand, everyone you build by hand, you got to build, build. So if you're going to make ten of them, it, it's the, the doing it with a house is a lot a lot a lot better way to go. One will it look more professional. The second thing about it is their prices actually go down the more you make. So the poor poor board cost actually goes down. Uh, now what there are a few ways to get it faster going to a house, but the one I looked at that was kind of recommended as a good place to go to was for a one inch board, it was twenty three dollars oh no, twenty three euro. So, I mean, to me, I, I don't want to spend that type of money because you can get what we're going to be doing here. You can make four of those boards for $15, and you would have all the chemicals and everything you needed to make additional stuff. You'd have to still buy more board stock. But I'll go, in the end of this, I'll, I'll go about local suppliers. Okay, next. All right, now the first step is, like I said, going to schematic to layout. So you have your design for your PC board. Now, uh, okay. here, here is a copy of this PC board that, uh, that we're talking about right now. This one uh, would not transfer because this is done on inkjet. But I want to uh, pass it around and uh, let you look at what you can do. I also want you to realize that this is the output from here. This is what, when you start off, you create your, your uh, schematic, you run your rule check, then you assign the footprint to each part. So like if you have a resistor, you go in the list of resistor and you click resistor and it it associates a footprint or where the pads are for each part that you have in your schematic. All right. Then you take that and you position them where you think makes the most sense. There are some auto positioning tools, but uh, I think they're still a little primitive. And uh, once you have that, 
you set your design rules, which you say, I want my traces to be a certain width, minimum. I want the trace spaces between the two traces to be a minimum. And you can also layer that. For example, on this board, the VCC and ground traces are wider as a minimum than the things that went to the microprocessor. Okay? The things that went to the servos were wider than the other. Now, you might not tell it when you look at it, but they, they are like 10 mils wider. So here, I'm going to pass this around. Now, is that the material you use for printing? No, this is not. This okay. was this is a master that I got confused and actually cut out one of the patterns, thinking it was. You yeah. find that out real quick that the inkjet will not transfer. Don't waste your time. Yeah. Okay. I mean that's not a. I am going to uh, talk about that, and I think pretty much in the next uh, next slide. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. And, and KeyCAD is a free tool. KeyCAD is completely free and unlimited. And uh, there are alternates that you can use, yes. I found it on the Ubuntu repositories. Yeah, you can. yeah it, it's, it's, a, it's Windows, it's, it's Linux, it's, I mean, for all I know, I think it's even Mac. So I think you can, you can get a version of KiCad in anything. And uh, it's a, the, everything that I, from the beginning until when I got that piece of paper that's going around, except for the array of the pattern on the actual last page was done uh, with KiCad. Okay, so when you, so this would be like what you get out of KiCad. Okay, you have the individual, one individual pattern of each one. So at that point you print them out because you want to do a few couple, a couple checks just to make sure. Uh, you want to print out the copper layers and check their orientation. If you're using double layers, uh, you know, where it's top and back, uh, front and top, you know, dual layer board. I'm sure everybody here is pretty familiar with that. Uh, let's see which one. Okay, here's a, a double layer board that it's the same, roughly the same design, but on this one I just let the auto router do its thing, so it would be on both sides. Now, on this one, uh, so this is an example of doing one of these homemade PC boards on both sides. <coughs> okay, uh, but you want to make sure that that you don't have like one pattern this orientation and one pattern like this orientation, so that the top and the bottom don't match. Uh, the key uh, and if you do the the front side silk screen, you have to flip it because the way a normal silk screen is done. The board would be here, and the pattern is shot through it. But since we're doing a transfer method, we're really going to be doing this. So you have to, you want to check those things out before you go out and start making a bunch of, trying to make a bunch of copies that you, you're going to add. If you're going to use a board ch uh, shop, you want to test your Gerber files. And here's a free tool that it's, it's, it's originally Linux-based, but it's also, I believe there is a Windows version of it, okay? Okay, so when you're satisfied with, you know, hey, I got, the, they are the way I want. It, I have, the way I do things, I know that all the writing is always backwards. So if I ever look at one of these files, and I look at it, and the writing is correct, you know, I can read it, I know that I've done something wrong, okay? Now, once I've done that, now I have Photoshop, so I tend to use Photoshop. But if you have don't have Photoshop, it can be done with GIMP, which is free, and that's available in Windows and Linux and Macs, I believe. So just all I'm doing here is making an array. Now I say, well, why are you arraying it? You're only going to use one. Well, the reason I'm arraying it is because the Staples copiers that I go get them copied on will only use an eight by ten sheet of paper. And I figure I might as well get as many copies on the page that I can since I'm going to use an 8x10 piece of paper anyway. And, 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 you, and this does occasionally screw up and you sometimes have to clean a pattern off and redo it, okay? So I usually array it like that. Okay, now, so the last step is you go, you go to um, 
staples. And there's two types of papers that I recommend. <coughs> One, which we're going to use today, is cheap photo paper. Now, how cheap is this? It's real cheap. Uh, I, this is the stuff I'm using. It comes from the dollar store. You get eight sheets for a dollar. Sometimes it doesn't look like this. Sometimes it's got a different package. But basically, it's cheap. Because what you're really trying to get is a paper that's paper and not plastic. If you buy the real expensive photo paper, it's really a plastic. You know, it may have paper in it, but it's, it's, it's got a lot of plastic on it. And I found that, the, that when you see how we get, as we go through the steps, you'll see why paper is important. Okay, so this is a, a sheet of that paper, and I'm... This, so this one, if you cut this out, you could one of these patterns out, they could transfer. The second source uh, uh, is from what used to be called Ginkos. Ginko? Ginko. 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 Okay, it's, um, it's, they call it their glossy paper. And it's glossy on both sides. I have been lucky to, to get it for 18 cents a sheet. And at one time I went in, the guy said, 